<laughs> We've been playing some a lot of new tabletop games recently, but we haven't played any of them enough to really give a full-on episode. So we're just going to briefly talk about three we've played recently. All right, so the third game we are talking about is... Viva Java! So we didn't even really play more than one turn of this game. We played zero games of this, zero turns of it properly. So this is just an impression based on a brief teaching and then an attempt to play two rounds. Yes, we screwed up a bunch of rules. Big time. So my um, Viva Java is like, uh, like you bid on beans and you form correlate. I don't want to talk about the mechanics really because we'll talk about it again. It's been a game that had a lot of hype. I've heard a lot about it. My and impression it has a of this game theme. is that it's too fiddly. And my rationale is thus. The way the game is written, at least the way the rules were described and the way you play them, there's a lot of things that kind of could happen simultaneously. And people seem to just play this game doing them simultaneously. But... It was me and Scott and Dr. Hazard and a bunch of other people in the front row crew who are all pretty uh, on these things. So immediately, anytime something could be simultaneous, the question was asked by someone, wait, 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 what order does this happen in? Because I'm changing my action based on what other people do. Exactly. So the, this would be fine, except that there's so many little things that happen. They, and there's a giant, and the game takes nine players. Granted, we, well, it can take eight up players, to eight up, players. It can take up to eight players. I think it, it's sort of weird. It says recommended with five, six, seven, or eight. Right, because when you look, the, the cool part about the game is this coalition forming aspect where you play every turn, you play your guy somewhere in the world. And wherever you play him in the world determines three things. It determines, actually, determines four things. Number one, which bonus are you going to get? Each place has a different bonus or penalty. Number two, you get a free bean wherever you go. Determines what beans, bean, beans, 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 beans. Determines beans, what beans. bean you're going to get. Number three, if you roast, it determines what kind, what variety you're going to roast on that turn, which matters. And number four, Anyone who goes in the same continent as you is going to be in the same coalition as you. There are three co there are three teams, basically, that are formed each turn. So you want to be on a team with the right people, right? Because then each turn, each team votes whether or not to do A or B, and then they play their turn right, out. Right, so but every, turn, every team, you're on a different team of three people. That team is either going to brew or it is going to research. If it researches, you basically all just increase your powers, right? In a, it, in a really non-intuitive way, we had to clarify the rules on like 10 times. Yes. Yeah. If it re if you brew, you basically all create a, a victory point coffee machine, and you will all get those points. Everyone on that team will get those points. The coffee it, machines are poker hands of beans, but you draw randomly, yes. so you have to play the odds But game. it's an individual game, so you have to think, okay, if I'm going to brew, do I want to brew with those people, right? It's like... You know, those people are, you know, below me. They're not going to catch up. So, yes, I do want to brew with them because we'll all get the same number of points from that brew. Thus, I'll be hurting these people who are not on my team. But let's say I'm losing. Someone's ahead of me. Do I want to brew with them? No, I'd be helping them, and I wouldn't really be catching up to them because we'd all be getting those points. But maybe then I could join their team and poison their brew making it so they don't get as many victory points, but that will only help someone else catch up to them. So what I really want to do is brew with someone else and have someone else poison their brew for me. <laughs> and you see where this goes. So there's a lot of cool mechanics in this game, but at least on an initial play, and it, the game is recommended seven and eight players. So with eight players and turn order matters so much. This will take forever. This game, you're going to have to cycle through eight players I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to do this in a loop like 10 times per turn. Yep. This game will take forever. So unless we read the rules way wrong. There were like the voting is supposed to be simultaneous, but then the action taking is like, you know, well, who, you know, this team. Okay. So we all vote simultaneously. Everyone in the whole table votes research, let's just say, right? So who researches first in the turn order? We research first. So we do the turn order research. That isn't clockwise. You're jumping around the table. Did You're you jumping know around the table, checking the turn order, which is based on these colored chits. The turn order changes every round based on victory points. That was something that was a huge problem was the victory point thing, right, is early in the game at least. It, it's victory points determine turn order. You have to move the victory point tokens in the precise order because when there's a tie, let's say two people are tied for three, whoever arrived at the three later goes first. 
or sec, right? It matters. So you have to move the victory point tokens in the proper sequence. You can't just sort of be like, okay, how many points did everyone get? I got two, I got three, I got four, right? You have to actually say, okay, you move yours first because you just scored the points. So my worry is now that this you game just has scored points. a large amount of sort of, it's not really mechanical busy work. It's just that the procedure it's of- It's not busy work because you're not calculating. It's just procedural- Time what I'm it saying takes. is you, it ends up having the same effect as busy work because you have to go through this procedure in such precise order that you can't ever just kind of do something. And as a result, you have to be constantly on the ball and aware of, all right, who just did this action? Now let's do the next action. You need like a person to run the clock tick of the game. I think that if this was a computerized game... It would actually be vastly superior because number one, you would never fuck up something like the victory point tying anything, right? So you wouldn't have to, no one had to think about that. And number two, all the things like drawing things randomly out of the bag and peeking, knowing but being, you know, all that kind of stuff wouldn't be an issue, right? It would all just sort of happen. You know, so it'd be like, do you want to draw a bean out of the bag? Yes. Boop, there's a bean, right? You know, do you, you know, it, it, it would be, it would solve a whole lot of problems, mostly with, you know, organizing the physical pieces and all that kind of stuff. So, and then if you could play it on the computer like that, the coalition making aspect, which is the interesting, unique mechanic of this game would emerge. And most of your thought would be going towards that every turn. And it could be really fun. Oh, there are a lot of rules clarification questions on the Geek, many of which are not answered. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I did it. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, and one guy says it's primarily a social game. That's why he likes it. It is very social with the bean sharing and the teaming up. And Except, the... no, it's not, because look at who was playing. That is a purely mathematical <laughs> game. It's so I, I can see how it's social if, the, if not everyone is super serious. Right, because you're brewing together. You can't. You, you this cannot, is a game. It's a game where you cannot score victory points alone. It is impossible. You must join a team every turn of people and do something. It is a game where I worry that playing to win will make the game interminable and unbearable. Possibly. Now we have to play it again to be sure. So we are going to play it again. I do. I do it. want to play it again. Unlike Core Worlds, only for like I said, that team making mechanic. Yep. Just because I want to see that go in another My game. My worry is just that that, those, that coalition for me is going to be so procedural that it's just going to drain all the energy but out I of me. But I can see how a similar mechanic might make other games awesome. Oh, yes. I so. agree on that point. Mm-hmm.